in the last few weeks I have been listening to teachings on submission <laughs> and I have spent the last week or so in the book of Ephesians which is where we get the the main verse the weapon that is used against wives to get them to comply with their husbands and this is one of the verses <laughs> this is one verse in the Bible that quite a number of husbands know because it is used as a weapon against wives wives submit to your husband <laughs> If they don't know any other verse in the Bible, many of them know that one. <laughs> but as I have spent some time in Ephesians, I'm just so amazed at how we know how to rip verses of scripture, kicking and screaming out of the context in which they are set. And you know, when you take a text out of the context, all you are left with is the con. <laughs> and many of us have been conned by not just this verse, not just this verse, but so many others. Let me just say that Ephesians is a letter. Ephesians 1 to 6 is one letter that was written to the church in Ephesus so it's not doing we don't do justice when we pick out a verse and use it in a way that is comfortable or satisfying or suitable for us we need to read the verses in the context and without going into all of the letter I'm just gonna stick with chapter 5 and a specific part of chapter 5 because this is where the verse is that is often used against wives I also want to say before I before I look at the the verses this letter was written to believers this letter was written to believers so for persons who are not believers this was not written for you <laughs> okay so the truth still apply but they were really written for believers so if you are not a believer you should not take just this one verse and apply it to your life. You need to also take 1 Corinthians 15 verses 3 and 4 that tells us about salvation and how we ought to be saved. You also need to take the, the book of John and Matthew and Mark and the other parts of the Bible. Don't just take one verse and apply it to your life. All of it applies to your life. All right, so Ephesians chapter 5. Now, as I've spent more deliberate time in the book of Ephesians, there are really some things that have, <laughs> I've just, it's, it's just different. It's just different. And I want to encourage you. That's a word that I use a lot as I share with you. I want to encourage you to spend some time in this book because the truths that are revealed in it, they are necessary for us to live a victorious Christian life. So I want to encourage you to do that. So Paul goes through a, a very detailed explanation of what, what it is for someone who, who has become a Christian. What happened before you were a Christian? He said in chapter 2, I believe it was that you were dead in sins and as you surrender your life to Christ Christ has made you alive and so he goes into the details of of how you should respond to the fact that you are now alive alive in Christ and that's what he explains in the in the previous chapters so when he gets to chapter 5 
he's continuing the the information he's sharing with the believers explaining you know what they how they should live what their lives should look like as they're responding to the fact that they are now alive or we i should say because i'm included <laughs> all right so i'm going to pick up at verse verse 17 because um, the the verse that is troublesome for us with the submission is in verse 22 but I'm gonna pick up at verse 17 so you need to read the previous verses the previous chapters to to be able to put into the proper context what is being said in in verse 22 so I'm pretty much just giving you a summary of what it says so in verse 17 he says therefore do not be foolish this is a new American standard Bible I think therefore do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is so after he explains everything he's saying because of what I just explained to you you need to understand what the Lord's will is he says, and do not get drunk with wine. Do not get drunk with wine in which there is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody with your hearts to the Lord. This is not a full stop. The verses continue. So he's saying being, be filled with the Spirit and then do these things as a result of you being filled. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to our God and Father. And subject yourselves to one another in the fear of of Christ so everything that you're going to do is based on the fact that you are now filled with the Spirit it's a response to you being filled with the Spirit that you're going to submit to one another so it's not your own human effort you're in whatever he's telling you that you need to do it's not by your own effort it's not your own works it's not it's not anything to do with you it's not anything of the flesh he's saying be be filled with the spirit and as a result of you being filled with the spirit he's going to the spirit is going to empower you to do these things it says verse 21 and subject yourselves to one another in the fear of Christ the King James Version says in the fear of God then verse 22 says wives submit yourselves to your own husbands as to the Lord and then the verses go on for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is also the head of the church he himself being the savior of the body but the point I want to make here is the submission of the wife to the husband is not an isolated action or activity or whatever, whatever. <laughs> it's not an isolated thing. It's not isolated from the context or the structure that God himself established. So he talks about how Christ is the head of the church, the husband is the head of the wife, and both parents, both husband and wife, are responsible for their children. And if you look in the, in the chapter, the instructions that are given to children, they're very clear. <laughs> I'm going to probably go through this chapter or maybe this book. In, in detail but I want us to understand that the submission of the wife is not in isolation of of the other things that Paul said it comes it happens as a result of the filling of the Holy Spirit so some persons are asking would probably say or ask 
does not mean that it is not difficult. So as an individual walking with Christ, is that not difficult? It should be difficult because what we're doing is going against the tide. We're going against the rulers of the world in which we live in. So it is going to be a difficult uh, relate, not a relationship. It's going to be difficult for us to do some of the things that we are called to do, especially if we're trying to do it in our own strength. And that is why I believe Paul said, be filled with the Spirit because the Holy Spirit empowers us to do the things that we need to do. So as we continue to be filled with the Spirit, as we continue to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to what he's speaking, these things become easy, And it, but it doesn't happen overnight. It happens over time. So submission is not a bad thing. In fact, if you as a wife have a problem with submission, you need to take it up with Jesus. <laughs> because he gave us he gave us the instruction. So what do I do if my husband is not a believer? <laughs> Remember I said before that these instructions were given to believers. So if your husband is not a believer, if you married an unbelieving husband, there are some things that you need to work out with fear and trembling. If you got married to a believing husband and he, he somehow turned away from the Lord, there are some other things, issues that you, you probably need to look at in that case. But here, the passage is talking about believer, a believer, and a believer two believers husband and wife both are believers so the other dynamics would have to be looked at in light of other scriptures and I, at one point paul goes on to talk about if your husband is not a believer you uh will be able to win him over by your conduct that's something else that, that you know we can talk about but i just wanted to point out about the submission thing because it becomes so heavy because we take the scripture out of the context in which it was written in and we look at all of the 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 variations we look at all the ways that the men are not doing what they were supposed to do. And, and bear in mind the scripture did not say. If your husband is a good husband. Or if he's doing what he's supposed to do. And I also want to mention this. That we do not submit to any human being. Exclusively outside of. Um, let me say it another way. We do not give our full submission to any human period in any way that overrules or overrides the word of God. So if, for example, someone is being abused, you should not be submitting yourself to abuse, to physical abuse, to emotional abuse, and so on. Okay? So when we talk about submission, it's not a blanket thing. And it's not, we're not, I'm not suggesting that as a wife, you have no voice. That is not what submission is. Doesn't mean that you don't have a voice. It means that there's a structure that God has established for the family. And you are functioning according to that structure that he has established. So the husband is the head of the wife. Um, Christ is the head of the husband. And both parents are the head over their children. They're responsible for their children. So as I start talking, there are some other ideas that are coming. But I'm going to share those in another video. I just wanted to point out this thing about submission. Because it, it becomes so much of a burden to us. And it really ought not to be. And I know some persons will say, Oh, you can say anything because you are not married. I'm just speaking what the word of God says. I don't need to be married to say what the word of God says. 
whether or not it is easy or something doable or, or how challenging it is or whatever the case may be, that has no bearing on what the Word of God says. What the Word says applies to me, it applies to you, it applies to all of us. So it is standard for all of us. Yes, so I just wanted to point that out quickly. I will think about sharing some more things that I have I've looked at in this book of Ephesians, but I want to encourage you to read it. It's a powerful book. And um tell me what you tell me what you glean from it. Tell me something that has stood out to you and we can talk about it. All right, so I just wanted to share that quickly. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you if you're married um wife or husband i just want to bless you tonight and pray that your marriage will be, will be strong and that it will last until either of you die um um that you will be fruitful in every regard that your children will look up to you will respect you will honor you and you will um experience the favor of god in every way if you're single like me and looking forward to marriage i pray that you will continue to just look to jesus to make yourself available look with your eyes too <laughs> look around and um just continue to trust the lord and listen to him and um i will see you i will see you guys in the next video thank you for watching bye bye